Hello, I'm going to talk a little bit about my latest attempt at the Dave's Diamond puzzle. Uh, first of all, I apologize for the video quality. I'm using a temporary setup tonight, but I wanted to at least um, have a chance to discuss where I'm at. Um, this is the previous version of Dave's Diamond, and I just wanted to use that to show what the puzzle is. It's a hexagonal die pyramid with two tips, and uh, the concept is by David Pitcher. And what it really represents is two... 2x2x2 two by two by two cubes that are intersecting each other uh, and it forms some very difficult geometry to make a uh, mechanism for. This is the version that I made using skirting rails and at first I thought this puzzle worked and I was um, feeling like this was a solved problem until David Pitcher realized that the skirting rails internally uh, could scramble in a way that they blocked the movement of the puzzle. So this is uh, a mechanism test so you know no no caps to this puzzle yet but um, the mechanism is testing the idea of using a shells version uh, of the puzzle for one of the 2x2x2s two by two by which I've been calling the blue 2x2x2 two by two by two, and uh, a Rubik's 4x4x4 four by four by four mechanism for the red 2x2x2. Two by two by two. This still leaves some issues to solve like um, one of the tips still needs to be uh, rooted in the puzzle, and some of these small triangle pieces still need mechanism um, in order to stay in. But um, <clears throat> so far, this uh, this print that I've made is actually very encouraging. There's, um, let's see if I can, yeah, here I'm turning uh, the blue puzzle, it appears, um, and obviously that's going to work out fine, but the, the real test is, I think, the red puzzle, which I'll turn here, and you can see, if you look inside, see the, you can see one of the tracks there. So as the red puzzle turns, you can see it turning relative to the blue pieces underneath. It might be confusing if I'm calling out these colors, but it's just a, a shorthand that's been worked out based on, um, you know, wanting to denote the, the two puzzles that we're really cr trying to create on top of each other here. One of them being the... Uh, simplest 2x2x2 two by two by two, which is blue and then the other one being the uh, little bit harder version the red one um, on top of that so uh, again if I look at these tracks here those tracks are actually sitting on the blue 2x2x2 two by two by two corners and those tracks move around if I move the blue puzzle and then if I decide to move the red I'm sliding pieces over it now you might be noticing that some of these pieces have a lot of play to them. And uh, as excited as I am about this mechanism, I'm also kind of uh, tempered by the fact that, you know, white, strong, and flexible, and with all the t uh, tolerances involved and everything, um, it still feels just a little bit too loose to be stable. I kind of wish that this was another 50% bigger, and then I would feel a little bit better about it. Um, but on the bright side, though, uh, I can I can make moves on the puzzle, and it and it does actually work. And I thought it would be kind of interesting to see if I could do one of the moves that David Pitcher used to prove that my previous version of this puzzle didn't work. Which uh, he rotated the puzzle, I think, to this position, and then rotated this symmetrical section here. Uh, 180 degrees and then rotated the puzzle back into diamond shape and the moves were blocked. So let's just uh, see if I can actually accomplish that. So here's a tip, here's a tip. Um, I'm doing it on the red cube right now. I don't know why I decided to do it the hard way but let's see. I'm gonna line this up with the real thing just so that I can kinda uh, help guide myself. So I want two little triangles kind of pointed at each other. Looks like I've got that. So now if I flip the puzzle over, I should have a symmetrical situation here, which it does look like I've got. These two triangles look like they're going to swap if I do a 180 degree rotation down here. So here it goes. I'm still moving the red cube. Okay, so I think I just did a 180 degree swap there. And then I should be able to straighten these guys back out. Let's see. Let's see. Whoops. Okay. I almost made a giant mistake. There we go. Okay. So now we're back to 
what I would call the diamond shape. And previously, on my last version of the Dave's Diamond, I wouldn't then be able to switch to the blue cube and make a move. But now I find that I can. So there's a 360 degree turn there. Now one of the things that's very interesting, at least to me, or mechanism people, about the way this has been done is six of these triangles couldn't be accounted for mechanism-wise in any other way. So um, they use these little gear uh, feet. These, these gears are bigger than the piece, so I don't know if that's in focus here. And I apologize if I'm, if I'm uh, causing problems there, but uh, the, the gear is bigger than the pieces around it, so that holds the piece in. That's true for this piece, this piece, and this piece, and then three pieces on this side as well. And then when these pieces pass, other gear feet pieces, like here, you'll see that piece just spins past. So the fact that it extends beyond itself, which would normally be not allowed in a puzzle like this, uh, is allowed because these things kind of do -si do past each other. Um, and this is actually gets kind of confusing even though there's no stickers on it, just with uh, trying to make sure I'm always keeping it in a diamond shape so I don't confuse myself and have to take the whole thing apart. Um, so I've mentioned that there's a, a shells mechanism, there's a uh, 4x4x4 rails uh, or, or feet mechanism, tracks mechanism, I guess is a better way to put it. And then there's this little uh, gear feet mechanism for some of the triangle pieces. But there's also a knucklehead mechanism. It's only a one layer knucklehead and that accounts for one of the the pieces, the tip pieces here. So if I kind of work this apart, you can see there's a male tab there. That male tab is what's holding this whole piece in. And it ends up actually providing some stability for the rest of the puzzle. So, so now, uh, going forward, what would I recommend? Am I ready to jump to printing caps for this version? I don't think so. It feels just a little bit too loose. I'd, I think I'd rather try a version that's just printed a little bit too large, or sorry, a little bit larger. And, uh, and I may even look into doing two knucklehead layers, one for each tip, because you know the fact that these tips are generally mated with these triangles, and these triangles tend to be the big stability issue, makes me think that that might be worth the extra space that another knucklehead layer would uh, would require. Um, now, even though I'm not ready to print caps for this yet, I'm still very excited about uh, how well it's working. It's just that I'm not ready to, to print up a copy of this and hand it to someone. I feel like I kind of have to cradle it in my hands as I'm turning it. Um, and, and, you know, as somebody who knows how these mechanisms work and how these designs work. Uh, but it's kind of fun to watch our, you know, the little gear feet uh, do their thing and looks like all the concepts are working. Just, again, I feel like the, you know, the cost uh, kept me from printing this at the size that would really be uh, stable. So I'll go back to the drawing board, think about whether I'm going to redesign a version with two knucklehead layers and maybe print another one. Thanks.